Hi, everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Caden. I'm Eli. I'm Eli. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and we cannot get our act together. It is a sad tragedy that we are a computer company down here in South America, and we can't even get this streaming right. We are just really, really having some major issues here. And as we wait for everybody to get in on this, because we, uh, we bamboozled everybody and we threw everybody to one place and we couldn't get the streaming going. And so here we are um, looking kind of like idiots, but we're doing the very best that we possibly can. So hopefully you guys will forgive us for this. And uh, as we wait for those to come in and around, um, I would just like to thank everybody for being part of our little group here. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell from my voice, but we have been, um, we're on two weeks of a common household cold that has um, plagued us and has done what common household colds do, which is put us in bed, make us cough, get runny noses, chicken noodle soup, that kind of stuff. And so that is where we have been on a little hiatus of this, and we hope that you guys are having very good health. We hope that you guys are in good health and that Yah is with you in all of this stuff. We are the people who believe that the laws, statutes, and commandments that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are the guide to life. They are what every person needs to be keeping if they want to be a part of the kingdom to come. Now, most people don't want to be a part of the kingdom to come. Most people want to raise their hands at eight years old and uh, believe that salvation cannot be lost and that you can do whatever you want to do inside of this world. Um, but that is completely contrary to what Scripture says. Our Scriptures, starting in Genesis all the way to the end of Revelations, talks about a set of people, a people who are not like the rest of the world, a set of people who are willing to get on their knees to the one and only Creator that we have and that we are in obedience to Him and in obedience to the law, statutes, and commandments of His Son. And when we are aligning our lives in those directions, then that is the path of the kingdom to come. Now, the, ping, the, the path of the kingdom to come isn't a easy road. It is a road that is paved with many, many misunderstandings. It is a road that is crippled by our inability to read the Bible from the front of the book to the end. If you are in any religion at all, or if you are in any kind of Bible believing system, it is our best interest and your best interest to begin at page one. When we begin at page 1500, and it starts with the writings of Paul, and Paul says, well, you don't need to keep the laws, or you don't need to do this, you don't need to be in obedience, you don't need to do that. It gets very, very confusing because there is no other places in scriptures anywhere outside of the writings of Paul that this kind of confusion comes into play. So we have to decide if we want Paul to be our God or if we want Yahuwah Elohim Most High to be our God. Because if we've taken the writings of Paul and we have made our lives a cesspool because we do not care about the most important things that are found in scriptures, which are the laws of our creator, then we're absolutely not going to find that, that path to the kingdom. And so we are out here attempting to help people guard their souls while we are attempting to guard our own souls. And there's no way that you're able to guard your soul unless you are in righteousness. And the righteousness that, that we know of only comes from the Torah. There's no other books, there's no other writings, there's no anything out there that gives us how we should be living according to the ways our creator wants us to live. So it is with that that we are here with you guys today and I know there are a lot of us out there that are struggling right now. There's a tremendous amount of people out there that are, we're, we're in the end times, right? Without a shadow of a doubt, there's no, there's no doubt that we are living in the end times. The world is wasting away right before our, our fingertips. We are seeing great evil rise up across the world. We're seeing things that we have never ever seen before. Knowledge has surpassed anything that we've ever seen. And right now we have an opportunity, if you are listening to this and we still have a freedom that we are able to choose our creator or to choose his created entity, which is Hasatan. It is always better to choose the, the, the creator of all things that are good 
Because when you look at the evil deeds and the evilness of the world that we are living in right now, it is completely contrary to what scriptures wants us to do and the way they want us to act. There's all sorts of great things inside the Torah, but most people refuse to keep them. All right, gentlemen, how you guys doing? Good. Good. Everybody's sick around this table. Everybody's still uh, doing mostly better on this. Um, what do we have? Did you ever make it in the chat, Miss Nicole? Um, kind of, but not. Kind of? No. Not yeah, we are we are totally burned on this whole technology side on this live streaming multi-streaming it's not so much the, the live streaming it's a multi-streaming trying to get it to multiple platforms at the same time we are just unable to figure this out and so maybe maybe we will one day um but right now we're not all right so everybody here we are um let us begin we are going to do what we do every single week we have, actually jade why don't you uh open us up with uh a uh the shema, shema. all right Hear, O Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your might. And these words that I am commanding you today shall be in your heart. And you shall impress them upon children. And you shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And shall bind them to the side on your hand, and they shall be frontless between your eyes. And you shall write them close to your house and on your gates. Okay. Uh, Kate, will you please open us up in prayer, please? First and Father, thank you once again for bringing us together as a family, united under your word, under your banner, looking to seek your Torah, seek your commands, seek your way, and seek the kingdom. I ask that today we do that, today we are able to find the kingdom in your words, we are able to find what you have written out for us, and what we are to do and what not to do. I thank you for your son, thank you for your prophets, I thank you for your son's sacrifice and giving us the gift of eternal life, even though we do not deserve it, that you have blessed us with that, you have graciously given us a gift that we do not deserve, we thank you for that, and we ask that. We do not abuse that gift. We do not take that gift for granted. We ask that your will is done today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, what do we got here, gentlemen? Uh, let's get going. Who do you have? We have very few people in the chat since we have botched this and uh, we basically lost all our people. So we have a few. There's eight, I saw. Okay. Well, we have Candy. Yeah. We have Irma. We have Ruby. We have Obi Lines. We have Jeremy. We have Days Rainey. We have Bone Cat One. Sister Barb. The Grand, Rosie Chica. Um, There's ten total. Lisa. Uh, that's it for now. Okay, so we got the ten of you guys out there, and that is amazing. Um, yeah, we are Brother here. Glenn. Yeah, Brother Glenn, I, I see that. Brother Glenn's in here. That's good. We got Brother Glenn, and so we got our fam. Um, maybe everyone else will uh, figure out uh, uh, the next next rise in. Rosie Chica says uh, oregano oil is awesome. Um, I'll tell you some some stuff that's not awesome is um, I had my tooth out and uh, my tooth was all jacked up. My wife gave me essential oils. Uh, I think it was last week. She, what was that stuff? Cloves and something oh, else? Oil. Clove oil. And I've never drooled as much as I drooled. I thought she numbed my entire face. I was drooling just like I was a drooling vegetable. I could not stop myself. And that was one of the worst things I've ever had. However, it made my tooth feel much better, and my whole face went numb for about five hours. So that's something that is not awesome, just throwing it in there. Okay, now let us get going into what we do every Shabbat, which is the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. And the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator are not hard to keep. Um, they are something that is, something that is uh, I guess, an enigma for most of the world. Because when you do not know about them, then they're simply a mystery. And you've heard of them. And the people out there are like, oh, you keep the laws? You must be a Jew. Well, guys, the Jewish people do not keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Inside of the Torah, that if you are looking at a religion that is a religion of obedience, there's no such thing out there. There is no religion that I have found that has a name, call it Jews, call it Catholics, call it Christians, call it whatever it is. Every single one of them go contrary to what the scriptures say. So the forward path that we have to the kingdom is, is a, almost like I would say a religious less system. Um, and I guess you could define religion what you want to call it. But if we are making a man-made name and we are falling under their doctrines, and their doctrines have anything that say the laws of our creator are gone, then you're in a satanic religion, right? You are in the religion of the devil. The devil is jumping around telling you, yep, there's no laws. Eat the pork. Do what you want to do. Hate your neighbor. 
drink the blood, look at your kids naked, right? That is what the devil's telling you to do. And every one of those things that I just told you right there are all commandments not to do, which is why most people in the world have no idea commandments are in and they're good for everybody. Okay, so um, greets out to Casey too as well. Um, I saw you pop in there. Much love to you, brother or sister. I think you're brother, I think. Okay, all right, so let's go over these. Let's do this, Law, Statutes, and Commandments. Is everybody ready? Yep. Okay, let's go slowly and go over them. If anyone in the chat of um, anything, if you guys want to go over them, if something doesn't make sense, like it's something that, you know, you just don't, um, it doesn't make any sense to you, let's talk about this because this is the point of us going live. Um, understanding that we are lacking in that we're just trying to get with you guys so that we can sit and chit-chat and go over this stuff as a people and talk about it in a way such as there's not arguments or people aren't screaming or, you know, we, we need to be able to get to the bottom of this as people of sense. We understand that the most common sense things that are out there is the Torah. That is what common sense is. And so let's begin. Commandment number one, be fruitful. Number two, multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have many over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. The earth bearing every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Guard my laws, statutes, or God, yeah, who is laws, statutes, and commandments? And uh, the Grand just popped in there and said, thank Boss Clan for um, hosting this. And, you know, Grand, this is a... Uh, this is a thank Yah thing. This is absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, something that this is Yah's Yah's place and Yah's kingdom, and, and we are. And it's amazing that I get I get to hang out with all of you guys, right? We're we're hanging out literally with people all over the world right now, and um, I just want to thank you guys for being part of it and and for just loving Yah's laws, or at least listening to the enough that that we can try to find this family because that's. That's what the Kingdom Road is going to be. The Kingdom Road is going to be a family of law keepers, the people that love our Creator so much that they are willing to do whatever it is not to sin and to be in this obedience. And again, as we read through these laws, statutes, and commandments, they aren't hard. They just really aren't hard. I mean, when you garden Yah's covenant laws, statutes, and commandments, that may seem like a, a boatload, but when you get down to it, we don't have a tremendous amount. It's not like a mystery or a hidden mystery of what we do and what we, we don't do. So continuing on, uh, every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Keep your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, fast, the Festival of Matzah. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Hebrew. Sanctify all firstborn, Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones for Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to not. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Now who is laws for criminals? Do not lie with beasts. No sacrifice to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you buy your neighbor's raiment, return to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends for you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no outsiders with other Elohim or out, make make no covenant with the other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make or use anointing oil on a normal person, and do not make or use perfume on a normal person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say. Your neighbors. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement, Yom HaKivorim. Do not, do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie to the woman in uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be Kodesh. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. What pay your workers the day's wages they're due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. 
not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard to the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself with the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult a medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of earth over Count Pentecost. Keep the feast of trumpets at Yom Terah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shem Nyatzeret. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor or the Yobel, the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you trespassed against. The Torah of keep, uh, the Torah of being as here. All right, let's talk, let's talk real quick. Uh, Casey's in here talking about tattoos. This comes up quite a bit, and um, let's just throw Miss Nicole under the bus. She has a tattoo of a frog on her ankle. She just went down the down the well. Okay, and this was um, this was what year was this? 25, 30 years ago, something like that. It was a long time ago. I, was uh, I wasn't even engaged to her at the point. Uh, she came and ended up with a frog tattoo on her thing. We were not we were not into um, Torah. I was a good Christian. None of this stuff makes any difference to us. And um, at that point, and so here we are. Um, 30 years later, and we uh, we have a, a little, still a little frog on the leg and things of this nature, and we're, we're talking about this a lot. There's a thing about tattoos, right? We're supposed to not defile our body. And there's a problem, though, however, many of us have not come into Torah until long after we already defiled our, our bodies. And so that always leaves us with a conundrum of what do we do? Are we in the wrong? Have we, have, are, we, are, we, are we sinning against Yahuwah when we made a decision many, many, many years ago? Um, and now we're, we're stuck with tattoos. Guys, we all come into Torah at different times, and the path of everybody coming into Torah isn't going to be all the same. We're going to fall in these pitfalls, we're gonna defile our bodies, we're gonna hurt ourselves, we're gonna do stuff outside of what we should ever do. And years later, when you're in the Torah, all we can do is go back, ooh, boy, boy, oh boy, I, I did this wrong, or oh boy, oh boy, I, I did something wrong. The, the the going forward is that the sin would be once you know, once we understand that we should not be tatting up our body or doing this of the sort or doing various things. And tats are only like one of these commands that we have all fallen into um, issues with. And so it's not it's not a uh, it's not a soul issue. It's not a salvation issue at this point. Now, if, if you were to go on at this point, knowing the law, statutes and commandments and going, you know what, I don't care what my Elohim Most High says, I'm going to tap myself up anyway, then um, that that's the problem. Did you have, is there something? Sister Barb says Egyptians and pagans tattooed themselves, that's why. Yeah. And she also said that a brother there got his lasered off, so then Casey asked, isn't getting laser treatment defiling the flesh, wouldn't it be the same as a tattoo? Ah, uh, man, I, you know, anything in the uh, medical world at this point is probably defiling yourself. Um, I mean, it, it removes the tattoo and gets the tattoo gone so you wouldn't have it, but it's still... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know so much as uh, at the end, you know, if you I guess if you're trying to get right completely with Yah and you want to like you're falling back on that. But as far as what I can see as a salvation issue, I don't see this as a salvation issue. It's a salvation issue upon non repentance upon that we are. And I don't even know if that's a salvation issue at that point either. But, you know, we do have it as a as a law statute and commandment that we're not. And once we know, then we are will be held accountable for what we do know. Jeremy uh, says, if you got a tattoo before coming into Yah, as long as you have repentance, it's okay. And Rosie Chica says, it is a blood ritual. I freaked out when I realized this. Yeah, it is It is an absolute blood ritual. And if you look at a, um, a tattoo machine in slow motion um, and the way it, like, penetrates the skin and as far deep down as it goes, there's bloodletting, right? And we have a command that we are not to, not to, to drink blood. And, and, and there's life in the blood. We know there's something very, very sacred about the blood, that it is not something that we should, you know, we, we can defile ourselves. When, it, when a woman is cycling, right, if you're touching a woman, you will be defiled as well, according to, to uh, Torah law. And so anything with blood is, is absolutely um, something our creator frowns upon. And, um, you know, I, I don't know so much as I would give somebody any advice as to go back into the medical industry and have them laser anything off. Um, uh, you know, when, when we are, have a new, new body, whenever that is, wherever, wherever it is we go, I, I don't know so much as our tattoos will even be there. So, um, that's about all I got. Is there anything else in the chat on that? Um, are spiritual tattoos the same. Um, I don't know what a spiritual tattoo would be. Is that something that, uh, defiles well, us or something? something? That has like Jesus 
tattoos. Oh, you're tattoos talking. Like oh, spiritual like tattoos. Is same. Yeah, any any tattoo at all, right? I mean, we're told. I mean, even if it's a what you think is a picture of anything, there's there's laws that in the Torah that say to make graven images or make pictures of them. Um, or anything of the sort. So even if you get a cross or even you get this stuff, I, I don't think there's a tattoo that is okay. Um, but did you have something? Yeah, and if I would say they're doing a spiritual tattoo, like say you, you want to show what you follow, you want to follow Yah and say it on your arm or something like that, you have ZZs to show that you follow Yah, so you don't need to get a tattoo effect. Yeah, you know, we're, we're definitely, we have seats, and that is, Jade is, Jade is exactly right. That's, that's a... a kind of a tattoo of the people of Yah because you don't, I don't leave my house without my tzitzit on. I, I will not, well, I will not leave my yard without my tzitzit on. Um, I take that, I take that back because I always, uh, I don't want my tzitzit ending up in my, my weed eater or something of the sort. Um, let's see. It has happened before. Kenneth Copeland drank his own blood and encouraged the congregation to do the same. Yeah, that dude's, that dude's Wait, a demon. Um, I, I don't know if you've ever seen his eyes, but the stuff that dude says, and that's one of those, those TV preachers. Um, there's, there's some dim, demonology in all of this stuff. And, you know, you can't, you can't serve our creator and live these kind of lives where you have like 15 private jets and you're doing all this great evil. And, you know, you're, you're not encouraging people to keep commandments. I mean, that dude is a, definitely a demon, no doubt. Um, sister Barb, your body is Yahoo is absolutely, um, I'm covered in tattoos and a, an unfortunate regret. I, brother, that's, um, you know, that, that's what happens, right? We, we end up in the world and that's why, you know, if what we know is that our parents were supposed to be teaching us Torah. That is the way of, of what we were supposed to learn. Before you were ever able to get your first tattoo, you should have known from your parents and, and that's what the guiding is all about. That's why we have laws, statutes, and commandments that our parents teach us this and that we at least have this idea. Um, a lot of times we're not, I don't think people are going to be held accountable on a tattoo side of the thing because most of us had no idea the tattoos are just part of the world unless you are in to scriptures where it's very clear that we are not to tat up our bodies or any of that kind of stuff okay um brother glenn did say removing the tattoo does not remove the fact that you got one yeah so as long as you repent from yeah and I, and I think that's right you know even the laser surgery i would imagine there's some sort of a uh, a blood a blood thing or two. I don't know exactly how it just burns it off, but I'm sure there's something else. So I, I, I would probably, Father, forgive me if I'm wrong, probably keep my tattoos if I had them at this point. Um, all right, so let us continue on with this. Um, anyone know where we're at? No, 104 or 105. 104. Uh, hold on. Jun Juniper, Jennifer's having issues with on the streams. Um, okay, Sister Barb says it burns off. Anyone else, can you guys hear us out there? Or have we gone to the YouTube dark side and can't... Um, broadcast like it's normal YouTube black hole yeah the YouTube's black hole they uh, they seem to throw us here um, no issues here okay Irma's cool um, okay let's let's continue on guys and uh, thank you guys again for when you guys comment in the in the chat it's just it's really fun to sit here and talk about all these things because all of us I, I mean we don't have the answers to a lot of this stuff and a lot of times we'll look to like people like sister Barb or brother Glenn, what their what their um, understanding is of things and then we can change our uh, understanding as well okay so let us roll through next one uh honor the yobel year jubilee year 101 i guess is where we're at all, all right. right confess your sins and repay to yahoo and repay who have trespassed against the torah of being an azir burns your garments the torah the laws of whoever touches a corpse probably who is law uh, torah love keeping your oath yahoo do not add or take away from the word Okay, and that's an important one right there, guys. This is, this is where a lot of us will fall. If you step into a religion, then by default, you're breaking commandment weight, right? It's very, very, very clear. Um, we do not want to add to anything, and we do not want to take away from the word. And that is something that, again, if you're in modern-day religion and you're worshiping on a Sunday, the first day, you've broken the commandments and then we'll, people will go well uh we we can we can change sunday it, it's, as long as you're, it's every seventh day or something of the sort as long as it, it's you know in that pattern all of these things are um adding to and taking away when we have taken the words of messiah in matthew and we have made all food cling because some dirty translators put in parentheses that all food has been made cling when the entire topic of the entire chapter has nothing to do with eating food, but it has to do with washing your hands before you eat food, right? That is adding to and taking away from it. And because of that one single chapter that Christians misunderstand, 
Nobody has a dietary law. Nobody cares about what's going in their mouth. Nobody cares that you eat a pig and it might be the sweetest, saltiest, tastiest thing you've ever had in your life. But to get to that point, you had to fry the heck out of it because it had more bacteria, more disease, more vermin, more worms than you could eat straight. You would die simply by eating a raw piece of bacon, right? Imagine that. And then people fight that. They're like, well, you know what? All food has been made clean. Well, it, it hasn't been made clean. It has not. You are still defiling your body and you're still basically under the under uh, an attack because you don't know if you're going to process and digest this food right and if it has the kind of bacteria that ends up with 100,000 people in the hospital every single year. What do you got? Back to the tattoos, I just have a question. What do you think about eyebrow tattoos? Would that be the same thing as a regular tattoo? What's the difference between an eyebrow tattoo and a picture of a frog? Kind of what I thought. One's a, one's a streak across your eyes and one's like a, a looks like a frog. The, 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 the rule is a tattoo. And I know, at my mother, I think I didn't even, I, you know what, I didn't even realize she had tattooed her eyebrows and up until I think I was like, I asked my wife one time, I'm like, does my mom have any eyebrows? And I guess like long before when I should have actually realized this, somehow she decided she was gonna tattoo eyebrows on or something of the sort. Um, I guess that's a thing with women. Same thing, right? We're falling under this, do not get tattoos. That's what our creator said. If he wanted you to have these huge old luscious bushy eyebrows and eyelashes and thing like that, you would have had them, right? Um, there's, there, you don't need to get beard elizer or, or uh, eyebrow elizer to, to brush them out. Um, live with what Yah has given us is because it's perfection in, in everything that he's designed us with. All right, commandment 107. The law of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do it. Uh, 108, do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall Find the Torah it laws upon your hand and the front of in your eyes. Okay, going back to 109, guard your soul. I mean, this is why I love talking with all you guys in the chat room right here because you're concerned about things like this, right? We, we got a tattoo 30 years ago. We're concerned right now about all of this, right? This is what guarding your soul is all about. Um, the, the, the process of soul doesn't start easily. You have to find is a path you have to have faith in our creator you have to have faith in his son you have to have faith that his word the torah is everything for our life if you regard the torah as the shining esteeming thing that will guide your life for everything then that is the beginning of guarding our soul and when we guard our soul we get into obedience with our creator because we don't want to live in this hell hole that we're living in right we're living in darkness we have r-rated movies x-rated movies nobody keeps their clothes on everybody's doing drugs this is not a world that holy people of Yah want to hang out with this is not something that we get up every single day and go wow the world is looking good right everything is going great right people are killing each other i mean you can't even step out your door anymore without something crazy going on and unfortunately this is the beginning of the end and these are what the end times are all about. And so guarding our soul must have us completely own, owning these, these Torah commands, right? Having them, writing them on our heart, mind, and soul. So that when somebody comes against us or some situation comes, we are not confused. That's what the Torah will do. It will end all confusion in your life because you will have a way to go for every situation that is coming up. That's the amazing thing on the Torah. Now back to where Jeremy was talking about um, these things, pigs, shellfish, predators, and scavengers are not for food. Absolutely. Um, we do not eat them because the shrimp can live in a bucket of destroyed water and the, sh the water will become cling in several weeks. They are the people that are taking up all of those nastinesses in the water and then you, you eat them and they are a hormone pus pocket is what they are. They may pop in your mouth and they just may be the sweetest, tastiest thing you've ever had, but they are bad. The same as lobster. Lobster go around and I've talked about my fish tank when I was a kid. I had a little crab thing. I had a couple crabs. I kept crawling out and dying. I couldn't keep them in my tank for some reason. But anyway, when I had a fish that died, this little crab would walk up to this, this white dead fish, grab a hold of it and just eat it. I, was, I really liked my crabs because I didn't have to clean my fish tank when my fish died. And I didn't like the dead fish anyway. My crab took care of it. So that's why we did, would not like to eat those things. Um, what else you got, Mr. We Hall? have a new person, and I'm going to slaughter the name because I have no idea. Olumide. Olumide. Or Roddy. Or Roddy. What's up, brother, yes. sister? <laughs> All right, what's the question? It's a brother. brother. He says, what is your take on the controversy on the Sabbath? Is it a lunar? Oh, it just moved on me. Lunar one or a weekly Saturday? 
Uh, you know, um, I know Jeremy will go with a lunar sub on this, I think. No, he won't. No, he won't? No. He goes with sub. So, I, I don't have a, um, we, as far as what I know, based up on what I've known, we have made our decision that the Sabbath is the seventh day, where we're at right now. And even though people call it a Saturday, um, that is on the Gregorian calendar. It's not a Saturday to me, it's a seventh day to me. As far as dates, times, and all of this stuff, I don't know if all of us have this together. And I wouldn't, uh, you know, I, I used to go, this is the dates, these are the times, uh, if you miss it, this is it. The first few years that we were doing Torah, um, we were guiding people, and I don't know if I'm guiding people in the right direction. I do not know if we had, like, like for instance, how do we know that the seventh day isn't a Tuesday, right? None of us know what day it is. We're at the mercy of uh, the, 5,000, 6,000 years later. So we're out here trying to figure out all of these dates and all these times. For us and our family, we are keeping the Shabbat on the seventh day, which is today, and we're trying to get as close as possible to all of the appointed times because we do have appointed times and you will find seven different people with seven different calendars and every calendar is slightly off. The Jews have their own way to do it. The Jews are like months off sometimes on certain things. And so... Um, yeah, Jeremy, he, Jeremy is a, a Zadok uh, calendar dude. He, he goes with the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Um, and so I don't know if that answered that uh, question or not. Did I answer that or did I just go around the circle? I might have just gone around the circle, but my apologies for that. Yeah, he makes the calendar by his hands. Yeah, and, and I, I agree. And so this is, you know, this is why I always talk. Like, we really, really, really need our Messiah. When the second exodus is upon us, when we are delivered out of this madness that we are in, we will have the instructions that we need to complete this. But here's the thing is if we are not attempting to keep Shabbat, if you're not attempting to keep the feast, if you're not trying to do the will of our creator, then you're not going to have this mentor in Messiah that comes and takes care of us. Because like Messiah says, many people will say in my name, I've cast out demons. I've done all this great stuff. I've done this in the name of Jesus. And he will tell them to depart from them because they are Horrorless. They are lawless. They have not been completing it. So if you want any second exodus of the kingdom to come, that is for the obedient people of our creator. It's not for the rebellious Christians that are awaiting a rapture as they chew down their pork chops on a, on a first day. So let's continue on before I get too sidetracked here. All right. Write the Torah laws on your doorpost. You got temp Right and good inside of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy grave images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pain through their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of the false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give the stranger clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Torah out laws at the end of the seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart nor share your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant astral poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hark unto the Nabi, prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The prophetess of Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with falseness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get the abortions. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost, you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear it pertains to a man, nor a man wear it pertains to a woman. All right, let's hit it. Um, Casey had a question on this thing. It's coffee kosher. And the, the, the name, the, the coat, I mean, as far as being kosher, we have no laws, statutes, or commands that talk about coffee. There's, there's nothing out there. Um, what I will tell you about my research with coffee is that it is a, um, it is a killer. And um, when pesticide. it's a pesticide and when you actually drink it and we we've had our we've had our runs with it um, over the years, Mr. Cole and I have completely, um, I mean, probably drank the coffee, coffee places dry. Um, and then it was a couple of years ago that I went down this road of research. And in this road of research, we found that when you drink coffee, over 50 percent of the blood flow in your brain is taken away. So that's right out of the gate. Your very first sip, your very first first lap of coffee, and you lose blood flow in your brain. Now everybody says, "Oh, that's a great thing. We're all spunky. We're all we're all high. We're loaded, right?" Well, that's not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be losing blood flow in our brains. It just sounds like a very very bad thing. 
And when you read more into it, like the actual research, when people have drank coffee, it's not so much as the coffee, but it's the stuff that is left in your body for days on end. The actual, the, the coffee stuff go, turns into something completely different. And I have a bunch of videos on my channel about this. I went down the, the rabbit hole for a while. And it is very not, it's not healthy, right? It is not something that I'm thinking that Moses probably sat there and had a cup of joe. Um, even though he did, he, he was a Hebrew. Uh, I don't think it was that at all. And I don't, the, the earliest that I can find people were drinking coffee was in the 1500s or 1400s. It was like a goat farmer out in the middle of something notices goats were eating some sort of coffee beans and then decided this was the big hit. And then they went and then they, the, the world has become, basically it's, it's, a, it's a low grade amphetamine. And so um, I don't, think the people of Yah should be drinking caffeine. I don't, and I know there's a lot of people that will say, oh, that's not true, because I had a lot of controversy the first time I talked about all this, but it, there's nothing in Torah that says you should not drink coffee. It, what did I miss in the comments? No, Jeremy just said coffee is a plant, but I know Jason has much to say about coffee. And then he says, growing and raising your own is best for everything, but many are unable to do so, so praying over everything is best the best idea. Yeah, Sister Barb's right. If it controls you, you have to control it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, addiction is uh, addiction kills, right? And it doesn't matter if you're brushing your teeth 15 times a day and you can't stop brushing your teeth or you're drinking coffee um, or you're, you're sniffing crack or something. I don't know. So um, it's, it's all the same. Addiction is, is, is all bad. So um, regardless, um, we try not to have coffee when we are able to. We, uh, we did really, really good up until we did the Bible project, and then we've fallen from the coffee grace. Um, and we're about to go back on to the no coffee grace as well. So, all right, let's, let's roll on. Right, 144. A woman should not wear a pertains to a man, nor a man wear a pertains to a woman. You find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies. And yeah, I got it. Go ahead, hit the Or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. Yeah, and like Brother Glenn said, coffee is addictive. Yeah, without a, without a shadow of a doubt. Guys, I have been in the drug world uh, since I'm my youth, right? I've been a street thug, I have sold drugs, I've been all into this, I've done every drug there is to do, um, except the new school stuff. There's a bunch of new school stuff that seems like everybody's in the street drooling. I never did any of that stuff. But what my observation is from stopping caffeine is it's equivalent to heroin. Um, people can stop heroin. People cannot stop smoking cigarettes. That's what my, that's what I have noticed in life. Very, very few people are able to stop smoking cigarettes because it has over a hundred different drugs in it. People are able to stop heroin, but the coffee is of the same problem. If you try to stop cold turkey, you're going to get massive headaches. You're going to get really tired. Um, it takes a solid week or more to come down from coffee. And so all I can do is tell you my experience with hardcore drugs across the world and um, that you wouldn't want to do any of those and, and you wouldn't want to do things that gives your body this kind of a problem because in the event you can't buy coffee and you're stuck on coffee it's like anything else you're out there looking for uh, uh, some grounds you're gonna be sucking on a, a coffee filter just like the guys smoking the cigarettes and they smoke the butts of the cigarettes when they're trying to give it up so that's what this is um much love to you genie not of the world good to see you um flu like a draw when going yeah we went through a flu like a draw when going to decaf from regular coffee yeah it, it is you can't and again i i have more experience in drugs than most of you probably will ever will and you should thank y'all for that um not something that you want to do if you want to be free if you are okay being a slave to addiction then coffee is friend um if you're not okay being a slave to addiction then free yourself and get rid of that stuff because it's Continue on 146. 146. That'll be lived on. You must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. The Torah of divorce. Do not take a pledge or a person's millstone. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. Do you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that's poor and needy. So every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field, the, the stranger, fatherless, and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and then the first one after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah if you go to the tabernacle. All right, so we made it. We got through this, and um, that was at, uh, we were a little late, but now we're actually even later, but I guess it doesn't matter. Hopefully, you guys don't have anywhere special to go. Okay, uh, Eli, lead us on, brother. Okay, so here we are, everybody. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading out of the book of Exodus, which is what we are... Um, 
into right now. Jade, can you give us a quick uh, update on where we are at in Exodus, what, where things are at? Um, as we all know, Moses got the children of uh, Israel out of Egypt, brought them to the wilderness to complain, they had, they had issues. Yah gave them blessings, gave them food, gave them water, and then Yah wanted to teach them commands. He wanted to teach them personally, so they all cleaned themselves up. Talk to them and start, they start thundering in loud sounds on a mountain. They all stood before the mountain. They're all allowed to come out and go near the mountain or they will die. Moses is the only one that can actually go up to the mountain without dying. And so they're all, they're all afraid. They're, he's hearing commands. He gave them, he gave them about 10 commands. Where we get the 10 commandments from is uh, Exodus 20. And so he, they, Yahoo gave them the thing and the children of Israel are all scared. All scared. And um, why, are, why are they scared? Uh, loud sounds. They're, the loud sounds, the lightning, the thunder around. Yeah. All right, so here we are, guys. So let us begin. This is Yah's scriptures in the bottom, and it is the Targums at the top. Um, what do you got? You got? Telling kid in the okay. Did you get it? Are you good? Okay. Um, now I know it says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to give you guys. What is your take on that? What is the last part that disappeared on me? So it says, now I know that it give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God. What is your take on the money today? It says, God, we trust on it. Uh, well, I mean, on the back of it, it says, in God we trust, it also has an all-seeing eye of Satan on a uh, pyramid, which is a Freemasonic pyramid, um, which everything in there in, uh, what is it, Italian or something? I can't remember what it was. Greek? It's Latin. Latin. Latin, that's what it was. Yeah, everything in Latin is uh, extremely Masonic. Um, I agree with give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Um, that, that's just really, really super, super good advice. Um, you know, it's, uh, I, I mean, every, every currency that we have, um, is a little satanic, uh, has dead criminals all over it. I mean, every single one of these people that they put on the money is a criminal that is most of the time isn't elected by the people and have done great, great evil. And uh, now they're celebrated on money and currency. Um, I don't know exactly what the, the question is on that. Yeah, money's the root of all evil. Um, money is necessary to live in the world, but don't chase after it and make it your goal. You must all work as commanded for six days. Yeah, um, it's one of those things. It's, it's a necessary evil. Um, there's probably lesser evil ways to make it than um, some tasks, some places that we can go in the world. Um, and it's just we're, we're all trying to get through it. I don't know a world that we can get into it where we don't have to uh, work for the man or, uh, you know, be around those who we probably wish we didn't have to be around just to, to make it, though. So. Brother Glenn says, we live in the world even though we are not of the world. Yeah, and um, yeah, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. I mean, I guess if that, I, I wouldn't recommend, considering that's not even a legal law, but uh, if you if you want to pay your taxes, then you got to first for it to give to Caesar what's Caesar's. Actually, it's not even Caesar's, the IRS guys, but it's all Caesar. So here you go. Okay, um, so let us go right here and let's get rolling on this. And Ms. Nicole's going to have to flip the chat over there. Okay, 21. And these are the right rulings you are to put before them. And who, who is this? This is Moshe. This is God. This is Yah, Yah, talk, Yah, Yah, Yah talking to Moshe. The right rulings which you are to put before them. Two, when you buy an Ebri servant, he serves six years. And in the seventh, he goes out free for not. Now, what is it called? What, is, what, is, what exactly is he talking about on this? Uh, gentlemen? It's a jubilee. It's a jubilee. Yeah, it's a jubilee year. It's, it's, uh, it's seventh year. And so this is, this is the kind of treatment that our creator wishes that people had. Sometimes in life, you end up making very bad decisions where you would, in the back of the day, you would end up as a slave. And it's something that nobody wants to be um, or where they are. But in the event that you end up being a slave, you bust a move for six years. And in the seventh year, you go out free for not. And not only that, um, you get stuff. So three, if he comes in by himself, he goes out by himself. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master has given him a wife, and she has borne him sons or daughters. The wife and her children are her masters. And he goes out by himself. What do you guys think of that? Um, you go, you end up enslaved. You end up and you get, a, you get a wife and you end up with kids. Then you are going to be uh, let free and your family is gone. What do you guys think of that? Uh, it's kind of weird. I mean, I think you'd want your family, I would think, if you love them. You'd want them. Yeah, you. well, I mean, you, most of the time, I mean, if you end up with a wife and kids, you're not going to want to. It, it would be an awkward thing. Now, why is this provision for slaves set up this? Why, why do you think that Yah would allow a family to be broken up for this particular piece? Um, maybe because he was a slave and not a free man and that uh, he desired more freedom than over the family. So should a, a man end up with a woman that is a slave and the kids, if this, if you're not the master, if you're just a slave? 
I think I, I don't think I understood that question well. All right. So if you are a slave that comes in and you end up with a wife that's given to you, do you think you would own this woman or as a wife? I mean, it was given to you and as I, a wife, and that means that we that we become one flesh. I mean, if you take it, use this like two flesh. So I think they should they should stay together. Yeah, this is. This I think it's people more like when he gives you a a wife, they more like you become part of the family than a slave. Uh, yeah, you would hope so, but you're still going to fall out under these slave rules that in the sixth year, um, when you work, you go out, and at this point, you, you either are going to choose slavery or you're going to choose your wife, right, or your family. That, and so that, that's an interesting choice. Okay, four. If his master has given him a wife and she has borne him sons or daughters, the wife and her children are her masters, and he goes out by himself. And as the servant truly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, let me not go out for free. Do you have something? Rosie Chica says, for the woman and the children's security, maybe it's doubtful the man could provide for his family because the master provided all. Could be. That could be. Very good conversation piece there. Okay. Um, so th here's a kind of the, the remedy of this, right? And if the servant truly says, I love my master, my wife and my children, let me not go out free. Then his master shall bring him before Elohim and shall bring him to the door or to the doorpost. And his master shall pierce his ear with an awl and he shall serve him forever. All right, how big do you think this all was? I don't know. I, I don't think it needs to be too big. You know, they used to be too big? I mean, you can't, like, destroy so the So is, is piercing the ears on an all through your ear? Uh, on who I, does think, it, I, I guess. think so. I think that's going to be this. Is. So essentially, what if you decide you want to stick with this guy, this guy's a good dude, then you're going to go up to the door, right? You're going to go up to a door post. You're going to stick your ear on this thing, and your master is going to drive the all through your ear. Now, um, is that it? Is that it? So you just have that? Because I know that women who have their ears pierced, that thing grows back in. It grows back in. You can't really tell at some level sometimes, right? Is that true, Miss Nicole? If you don't always wear earrings, but there's always a hole. Is you there? You can always puncture back through. You can it. always find your slave, the person? Yep. All right, well, there you go. So that's how to figure out if this guy is a, your slave. He, look, at, look at his ear. This man, I put an all through this man's ear. Okay, seven. And when a man sells his daughter to be a female servant, she does not go out as the male servants do. All right, and is this bad parenting, or why are we selling our daughters? Yeah, to I, don't, I don't know. Good question. I don't know the situation here. Have you gone completely broke? Is this the best option that we have, is to sell our daughters to be a female servant? I don't know. Uh, I am reading several. It says, and if a man surrenders his daughter to be a maid servant. Yeah, so still. Maybe it's, like, maybe it's like give or something. Maybe it's yeah, like a bargain I, thing. I get it, but um, what control do you have over your daughter when you sell your daughter out to be a slave or something or to be a servant? I don't know. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Eight. If she is displeasing in the eyes of her master who has engaged her to himself, then he shall let her be ransomed. He shall have no authority to sell her to a foreign people because of him deceiving her. Okay, um, what, what was the deceiving part? Uh, if she is engaged well, So I think this is like, basically, okay, so this is basically, basically selling her, like, is to get engaged, like, he has to pay whatever, like, whatever to get. Oh, we're talking like, about the bride price? I, I think so. I think so? I think that, and then he um, basically says that, wants to marry then he basically doesn't love her then that's basically deceiving her because he didn't actually love her ruby says maybe it's so she can have the security like rosie mentioned yeah maybe yeah um it's interesting though he shall have no authority to sell her to a foreign people because of him deceiving her they call it that deceiving part is when um i think it's like him saying he loves her right or he's going to take care of her and, he and she's displeasing in the eyes and then you know and that's the thing of of our creator it, it's it, there, there's some amazing laws and one of these laws simply is the rape law and when we first went over the law of rape that a man rapes a woman if she's still a maiden he has to marry her it's he doesn't get killed right out of the gate it's you marry her and you do not 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 marry her right you have humbled her and so because of that and I was a little confused about that, right? And I went to, to a brother of mine, Brother Todd Bennett, and I'm like, look, this, this command seems a little, little wacky here, right? You can go rape a woman, and you, all you have to do is marry her after that act, right? That just seems a little uh, brutish, seems a little uh, off. And he explained to me how great it was, because if you would have been a woman that got raped, you would not have an opportunity for a husband, right? You would be adultered if this guy was still alive. You would not be cared for. This woman would have been shunned back to her dad. When her dad died, she would have nobody to support her. She would end up on the street. She would become what we do not want. So even in the, in the worst vile act of rape, our creator has made laws and rules that are supposed to rebuild things and make them lesser evil than, than what they were. Okay, um, anything else? Uh, let's see. 
Sister Barb said that rejects her as his wife after keeping with her, has relations and refuses her as a wife. Yeah, that's and, then, and then sells off to the foreigners. That would be completely evil. And Casey says, what's the thing about mahogany? Monogamy, I can't say That's it. the multiple wife thing. You Polygamy or, monog or monogamy? monogamy. I, there's like two different things. There's one where it's like, one, one dude, more than one wife one, is a Hebrew. Yeah, one dude is a multiple. I don't know what the question is on this. We've gone over this before, but we'll go over it again. Um, there is the we have a little laws, right? As as in, if you read scriptures, there is a there's really a man could have multiple wives according to scriptures, but we have to take it back to the times and places that this was back in the days. Let's say, for instance, um, any one of our forefathers that did not end up with a fleet of women and and a bunch of kids you could have marauders come by and wipe out your entire family the strength of your family was it been was upon your sons and the strength of all of the people that you could have and so at the beginning this was all a survival thing this was how to uh populate the earth this was how to keep things going in most situations that we read in scriptures it did not turn out well the the, the women were fighting, the kids were fighting, the people were fighting. It never, ever came to anything good. From Abraham having a, a, a concubine, um, Hagar, it did not turn out well. You can see of all the situations from the time she ran off, um, she was run off, she was kicked out, that it did not work out well. It's not something that brings a family to strength. You are not going to try to raise a family and have a wife and kids and then decide in the middle of this that you're going to get another wife. And it's, it's not going to go over well in today's things. Is there a law against it? No. But we had a purpose for it back in the days. And scriptures is very, very clear. Messiah talks about um, the love of a husband and the love of a wife. It's called one flesh. You're supposed to have two flesh. You're supposed to be bonded as one. And in certain situations, say like 6,000 years ago, where the marauders were coming to wipe out your entire family, that's the only way to stay alive. And um, and it's the only way to build it, but it doesn't it doesn't mix and mash with with today's society. It's just you're not going to build a strong family by doing this anyway. I've never, and in fact, I've seen people in these current days attempt this, and it doesn't do anything. In fact, there's a whole group of Torah keepers that are um, I'm not even mention their names, but everybody knows who they are, and they are all down with this, and they they all are uh, they preach it, they teach it, they talk about it, and. Um, what you can see from the outside is that it destroyed the group. The stuff that it does, it just brings in great evil. And it's not its not a good thing. It's not a good idea, um, in my personal opinion. Okay. Mishiach said, have one wife. Yeah, have one wife. And, and Mo Moses even taught, you know, they, they were talking about, I think it was Messiah that said this. The only reason that Moses gave a reason for divorce is because the people's hearts were too hard. You're not supposed to... Uh, hate your wife. You're supposed to, she is supposed to be a bond to you, right? You are her. She is you. You guys work as a team, run as a team, everything as a team. And that's the power of that teamwork is because, you know, it, for anybody who's been married, um, I will say the wife is the greatest part of me, right? Uh, if there is any good part of myself, it's my wife because she is the awesomeness part of my badness. And we really um, complement each other because I'm completely wild. And she's pretty quiet in things. And so it is a very complimentary piece that she can control me, kind of, in certain ways where most people were not going to ever get me to calm down at any means. So um, it is a precious thing, the entire marriage. It is something that should be, um, people should find their love. And it may not be the, the greatest looking female you've ever seen in the world, but beauty is on the inside. And all of these fake women that are just so magnificent, it's not a good life of chasing them around and getting them where you want to be. Beauty is everywhere. And if you, if there's a woman or a man that truly loves Yahuwah, there's beauty in that because that man or woman is going to treat you right. He's going to do what is according to the Torah. And that's what we need to do is we need to be obedient in everything. And that, that comes down to marriage as well. Carla says it would be really tough to be spiritually connected to more than one person, not a peaceful situation with more than one person. And it's, it's not. And, you know, I know another couple that actually did this, and I'm not going to go into anything further other than it looks awkward. It very much looks awkward that these people are doing this, but there is no Torah command that says you're not supposed to. But um, it's not going to bring strength. You're not going to. You, there's always there's going to be issues like you have family one and family two. Um, who's, whose house are you going to stay at? Family one. Who, what's the night? Who, you know, how's wife one going to feel when you're spending time with wife two? 
You're never going to find that personal connection, that personal bond of, of commitment when you're when you're like that. And unless you're unless you think that somebody's gonna come kill your whole family and that you have to have kids real fast, don't don't do this. It's not a good idea. Okay. Hold on. Casey says I'm a teenager and having many girlfriends is like polygamy. That's adultery, friend. Um, it's it's not not it's adultery, right? Having girlfriends where you enable and where you are into the act of this, um, that is adultery. And this is where my brother, you would want to uh, keep yourself pure. If you are in those kind of relationships with the women, find that woman who will not engage in sex until you guys are completely married. Find that because that is what you are looking for, and this is the only way forward. Because it, it's too easy to find these chicks, and they're 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 never going to give you their everything which their everything must be Yahua, right? It has to be their heart that is based in Yah, their strengths. And if you are based in Yah, if you find this kingdom to come and you find that spiritual woman, you guys will build this huge family that will never be able to be broken. There will never be outsiders that come in and break this bond of love. Um, they are out there. Torah, Torah women are the women for you. Torah men are the men for you guys out there. Okay, um, let's continue on. Where are we at, guys? Uh, I think nine. I want to say is nine. Is it one o'clock yet? I think we're getting there. Okay, seven. Uh, is it? Uh, is it nine? Nine. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. Nine. And if she has engaged her, and if he has engaged her to his son, he is to do to her as is the right of the daughters. If he takes another, her food, her covering, and her marriage rights are not to be diminished. And again, this is the way of Yah. Right? He doesn't want you to be. Um, used, abused, and kicked out for no reason, right? He doesn't want people to be um, slaves to uh, no house, I mean, you know, slaves to being homeless. That's just, it's not what our creator wants us to do. Um, now, Eli, how far are we reading before we go to the top? Uh, I was going to have you finish this last section okay. about this. Uh, 11. If he does not do these th three for her, then she shall go out for naught without silver. Okay, so we're going to start in, in the Targums at the top. And for those who do not know what the Targums is, uh, it's another translation. It, it's got a little bit of leaven in there. And so we will try to find the leaven and uh, produce it for you and kill it. Okay, Exodus 21.1. And these are the orders of judgments, which you shall order before them. If you have bought a son of Yashraya on account of his theft, six years he shall serve. And at the incoming of the seventh, he shall go out free without price. Okay, same stuff we already read. If he came in alone, he shall go out alone. But if he be the husband of a wife, a daughter of, a, of Yashrael, his wife shall go out with him. All right, um, does that say the same thing as we just read? I said he goes to servant with her. I didn't, giving, okay, if, he a, if he becomes a slave, I think when he goes into slavehood and he, already, mm -hmm. then he keeps the wife he's already married to. Okay, and so the other version, this one says, Married, then his wife shall go out with him. Okay, so it says the same thing. All right. Master, give him a wife, a handmaid, and she bear him sons or daughters. The wife and her children shall belong to his master, and he may go out alone. Okay, still the same oddness here. But if the servant shall affirm and say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, and I will not go out free, then his master shall bring him before the and bring him to the door that has posts. Just write it ear with an all. And he shall be a servant to serve him until the Jubilee. Okay, this is something else we do not see here. Because it does not say Jubilee here. It says forever. Um, all right, what do we make of this? Because this is, this is the first time we've actually seen like a complete contra contrary to scriptures. Um, what do we make of this? Jubilee year. So the first time would have been seventh, seventh year or would it be a 49 year? The first one was the seventh year. Mm -hmm. right. And he shall be a servant to serve him until the Jubilee. So I think if you... Is that a 50th year thing? Maybe. Or are we talking another seven? I don't think that, I don't think it's, uh, it's all time. If you put your ear to the door, I, I believe what scripture says down here that it is serve him forever. So again, this is what we look at right here, guys. This is, this is uh, not, I don't think this is right, but I don't know. So just possible 11, 21, seven. And if a man of Yashrael sell his daughter, a little handmaid, she shall not go forth according to the going forth of the servants of the Kinnany, who are set at liberty on account of the tooth or the eye. But in the years of remission and with token and at the Jubilee and on the death of, of her master and by redemption of money. Now, what are we talking about with the Kinnany with the uh, account of the tooth or the eye? You guys remember this? Oh, yeah. So they, like, they're if like, you knock their tooth out or make them blind, they go out for free. Yeah. Right. And so we, we are always discussing this and it was always weird. But that's what they're talking about right there is, is there's other 
you beat your slave and you knock his tooth out, you got to give, you got to, you let him go. I don't know why the tooth thing is, but obviously you shouldn't be beating people, knocking their teeth out. But if you do, then you get out for free. Okay, Exodus 21, eight. If she has not found favor before her master who bought her, then her father may redeem her. But to a foreigner, he shall not have power to sell her. For as a vessel of her, Yahuwah, he has power over her. So, it's saying Yahuwah there. The vessel of her. Well, I think what it would have been was it would have been a lowercase lord like her master. Master, and they screwed it up mm -hmm. somehow. Yep. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, for a vet, yeah, I think you're right on that. That does sound a little weird. There's some more oddness in this stuff. All right, um, twenty-one nine. And if he had attended her for the sight of his son, he shall do to buy her after the manner of the daughters of Yashrael. If he take another daughter of Yashrael to him beside her, her food, her adorning, and her conjugal rights, he shall not withhold from her. And if these things he does not to her, for her, to covenant her to himself or to his son or to release her into the hand of her father, she shall go free without payment and a writing of release he shall give her. Now guys, the writing of releases is something very, very important. And this is why when you give a letter of divorcement, it was an absolute huge thing. Like a woman who was married to somebody could not go free without her letter of divorcement because she would be completely, she would be, she would, nobody would take her, right? If she was still married to somebody and he did not, had not officially divorced her, then the person that was getting with her is gonna be committing adultery. And, and so this is why all of these, when you have a writing of release, these are all things that, you know, it's, it's evidence of where and what, what's, what's happening. All right, so I'm- uh, you're on 12. Okay, uh, we're going on 12, Yah scriptures at the bottom here. He who strikes a man so that he dies, shall certainly be put to death. But if he did not lie in wait, but Elohim delivered him into his hand, then now I shall point for you a place where he is to flee. Okay, what are we talking about right there? Well, I think it's like self-defense. I think it's like, 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 yeah, like kill him in self-defense. Yeah, and what is the, where's, where's the place to flee to? What are we talking uh, about? Other cities. The cities of refuge. Yeah. Uh, the cities of refuge. All over the place. So that uh, you're protected and people can't come inside unless you're there fleeing of refuge for anybody who does not know are um from what we can see they're kind of remote places like um they're places where some dude has uh killed somebody you got somebody else's brother chasing you when you finally make it to the city of refuge it's harder to get to um they're they're things of safety and that is what the city of refuge was all about okay 14 but when a man acts presumptuously against his neighbor to kill him treachery you were to take him even from my altar to die all right, what are we talking about? Why, why are we taking this guy even from his altar? Um, so some dude runs, goes kill somebody, and you're sit he's the guy standing there at Yah's altar. If he did the act of murder, you're still going to drag this dude away. Yeah, he should be uh, killed. Okay, and he who smites his father or his mother shall certainly. He who kidnaps a man and sells him, or if he is found in his certainly. Be put to death. I don't think you should just say man. You should say anybody. You know, it could be children or it could be. Men. It could be. I women. think man is mankind, so man and woman. You, you will be killed. Well, that's the thing. We live in a world of, of child trafficking. I mean, this is this is unfortunately it has become a um, nobody even cares, right? We had uh, Epstein Island, and you have every single person of prominent uh, anything. They've all been over there, right? They've all they've all been in this great darkness and this great evil. So according to Torah. Dude, we should be knocking these planes out of the sky. Every time they fly over there, you should be bombing those things, dropping them in the ocean. Every single time they leave that island, they should be gone. But unfortunately, here it is. We live in a situation where even the, the I can't even say that. You already have Donald Trump, uh, who has visited the island on multiple occasions, and people are still out there um, getting ready to vote for this guy. And if you guys really want to know what I think, go look on Rumble. I, I talk about this quite openly on Rumble or on 153 News. Okay, 16. Casey has a question. All right, what's up, Casey? It says, let every man be a liar and let God be true. I know it means don't lie deliberately, but what kind of liar are we to be? So Jeremy says it's basically saying test everything to the word of Yah. And Brother Glenn says don't be a liar or deceiver. Yeah, so that's not saying to go be a liar or something of the sort. That's just saying that the truth will always be found in Yah. It does not matter what the world says. It doesn't matter who it is. If it goes against the Torah... The man is a liar and Yah is correct. And that, that's what it is. That's why we have the Torah. Because every situation that you will get into, my friend and friends out there, you can base everything on the Torah. Do I go date this woman here? Do I go out here? Do I do this? Everything has an answer when you understand the Torah, which is why we should have this all in our heart, mind, and soul. Okay, let's roll on. 
unless somebody has anything else. Epstein Island is called Millstone Island. Yeah, Millstone Island. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> In Millstone Island, you bet, you bet, and they've all been there. And now we live in a society where they uh, they they release like here here's 15 names of the evil people, and then here's another 15 names of the evil. People. Oh yeah, here's another. You know, instead of letting everybody deal with this, and the problem is when everybody has the names, nothing will change. You still have a guy who visited the island a whole bunch of times, and people are still considering voting for this guy. It is insane. Okay, 16. Uh, and he who kidnaps a man and sells him, or if he is found in his hand, shall certainly be put to death. And he who curses his father or his mother shall certainly be put to death. And when my, men strive together and one smites the other with a stone or with his fist, and he does not die but is confined to his bed, if he rises again and walks about outside with his staff, then he who smote him shall be innocent. He only pays for lost time and sees to it that it is completely healed. He is completely healed. And so these are um, very good things, right? creator has come up with answers for absolutely everything if so, if you uh accidentally get into it with some dude you crack him in the skull he doesn't die but it's confined to the bed all you got to do is pay for the time he was off work pay for his food pay for this stuff right that's that's a very good system that is a great system 20 and when a woman and when a man smites his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies under his hand he shall certainly be avenged so there you go again dudes are beating up his servants and uh, you know it's, it's, these are these are weird, weird scenarios that we talk about because we don't have servants. We don't. And if we had servants, I can't imagine that I would be beating them up. Um, I don't know. Maybe they're belligerent servants or something. I don't know. But I just it, it, these are weird things. 21. But if he remains alive a day or two, he is not avenged. He is his property. All right. So you can beat the guy to a living pulp. And if the guy lives a day or two, he is not avenged. Um, thoughts? Anyone? Um, I guess that's Stop the way it is. Don't beat your servant. Don't beat your servant. Okay, yeah, be good. Okay, and when men strive and they smite a pregnant woman and her child come out, yet there's no injury, he shall certainly be punished according as the woman's husband lays upon him. Wow. Well, that's that's, that's right. not gonna be good. Not you got the husband putting beating. Yeah, and I mean who? What? What? I mean, this is the thing: is if a man strive, and so basically they they're fighting a pregnant woman. The kid comes out okay, then the actual uh, punishment is afflicted upon the dude that beat up the wife, and it's what the husband lays upon him. Um, I don't know what the, I don't know what, where where's the limits of what the husband can lay upon know. this guy. It doesn't, I, it doesn't define any like limits. So yeah, I don't know. This is this is gonna be hot. You better hope that that husband, that wife, have uh, come to love you in that time or something because it's hopefully they're merciful. Yeah. Okay, twenty three. But if there's life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot burn wound for wound lash for lash and when a man smites the eye of his male or female servant and destroys it he is to let him go free for the sake of his eye and that's what we're talking about right here that they were just talking about previously and when an ox scores a man did i miss one 27 yeah i was looking at your, your mom what did you have did you have something there um casey has another question What's is the law true today and applicable if i curse my father should i be put to death or obtain mercy well, um, I guess you got to figure out why you're cursing your father to begin with. It would be a good good start on this thing. And, and uh, but the Torah is the Torah, right? You you don't want to go down that road. I don't know how old you are, my friend, but I will tell you from personal relationships. I had a very tumultuous relationship with my my mother and stepfather to the fact that I left the house at 16 years old and I didn't really have a conversation with him up until about two years ago when I really had a conversation. So um, that is that is that, and I, I can tell you that I led a life of anger, and I led a life of um, wanting to inflict damage back to um, my overly aggressive parents at the time, and um, it's not a good path. So if you are cursing your mother or father, we all fall under Torah. It's the same law for the stranger. It's a, it's the same for the Ebrium. So yes, if you're cursing your father or mother, you should be put to death. Unfortunately, that's what the Torah says. So it's probably best to get right with them. And, um, you know, whatever whatever issues you guys might have, it's uh, time waits for no man. And um, our parents that were always, I don't know, for some of us, not impressive growing up, um, they get old, right? They are not the same people as when they were. They probably wouldn't do the same things as when they did in the back. Um, and we got to learn. We got to walk on. And we got to forgive them. Because it is something that uh, we got to do. What do you say? He says, I hit my father in the face. The law says I should be put to death. Yes. Unfor unfortunately, that would be the case. The good news is we have a Messiah. We have Messiah Yahushua. 
And where you're, you're sitting right here right now, you're learning the laws, statutes, and commandments. My brother, we can't undo the things that we do. Sometimes we get into the stuff because we don't know the Torah. We don't know the stuff. Ask for forgiveness, brother. And regardless of how angry you are, um, if you walk these lands with anger, it will just tear you up. I promise you everything in your life will be worse. Your blood pressure will be up. Your health will be worse. Um, I held on to hate my entire life. And that is the what I will tell you from my experience is that I should not have done that. And 25 years ago, I should have made peace. Um, we, we have to live and learn. And here it is. We would all be dead, right? All of us. For, for these, if we fell under the laws of the Torah, we would all be dead, which is why we have Messiah, which, are, which is why our Messiah came and walked it perfectly and gave us a chance as the perfect lamb sacrifice. And it is by his blood that we will have the curse of the Torah broken, the spiritual curse of the Torah. So that is, that is it. And also it's part of the physical as well. Okay. Sister Barb says sometimes you have to love and respect people from afar. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And so, yeah, so, sometimes you'll never get along with them, never. Um, but time will change everything, and time time does make things disappear. Okay. 27. 27. If he knocks out the tooth of his male or female servant, he is to let him go free for the sake of his tooth. So, obviously, teeth are like an uh, important thing to you. From... So, and, yeah, absolutely. For anybody that has never had tooth issues, Anytime that you have a tooth issue, life becomes very, very interesting. The little flatness of the teeth, you have no idea why you have a flatness of the teeth until you have half your tooth knocked out, and then all of a sudden, every bit of food sits there in the bottom of your, 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 your mouth. It's incredible. So yeah, if they knocked your tooth out, set that guy free. He needs some help. Okay, now we're heading back up to the top of the Targums. 12. Whoever smites his son or daughter of Yashrael so as to cause death shall be put to death with the sword. But he who did not attack him but mischance before, from before Yahuwah be at his hand, I will appoint you a place where he may flee. But if a man come maliciously upon his neighbor to kill him with craft, though the priests are mis ministering at my altar, and slay him with a sword. And he who wounds his father or his mother shall die by strangling. So tough words here, 21, 16. And he who steals the soul of the children of Yashrael and sells him, or if he be found in his shall die by strangling so this is um this is an interesting way of saying kidnapping right you steal the soul of a child and that's that's right now we're fighting all of these people that are trying to make pedophilia into commonplace and make it from people of monstrous uh craziness to something that oh yeah pedophilia is okay and uh it, it's not it's absolutely not okay 27 and he who curses his father Dying, he shall die by being stoned with stones. Men strive together and one smite his neighbor with a stone or with his fist, so that he shall he die not, but fall ill. If he rise again from his illness and walk in the street upon his staff, he who smote him shall be acquitted from the penalty of death. Only for his cessation from labor, his affliction, his injury, his disgrace, and the hire of the physician, he shall make good until he be cured. So it gives us a little more understanding of what if you know dude up. Unfortunately, um, we have, the beating has been done. The guy didn't die. You need to take care of his physicians. You need to take care of his house. You need to take care of his injuries. Uh, he's going to be disgraced by this, obviously. And you need to take care of him until the dude is walking on his feet again without problems. Okay, 20. And when a man has smitten his Canaanite manservant or maidservant with a staff, and he die the same day under his hand, he shall be judged with the judgment of death by the sword. Again, these are crazy things to, 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 to have a command for, right? It's, it's essentially saying you could beat a man to death. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's, these are hard times. These are different times than we live in right now. Okay, 21. But if the wounded person continue one or two days from time to time, he shall not be so judged because with money he had bought him. All right, 22. If men, when striving, strike a woman with child and cause her to miscarry, but not to lose her life, the fine on account of the infant which the husband of the woman shall lay upon him, he shall pay according to the sentence of the judges. All right, that tells us a little bit different than what we had, we, we had just well, this read. This is about miscarrying. This is oh, I, like, I like the first one. The husband could deal with this too. Well, this is, this is different because the first one didn't miscarry. Yeah, so let's look at 22 and what it says. And when men strive and they shall smite a pregnant woman and her child come out, yet there's no... That, that, that means the child come out. That means she's dead, yep. right? That's, that's what that's saying. 
Um, yet there's no injury. He shall certainly be punished according as the woman's husband lays upon him. Um, yeah, you just, yeah, that's, that's just tough stuff right there, right? All right, 23. But if death befall her, then you shall judge the life of the killer for the life of the woman. The value of an eye for an eye, the value of a tooth for a tooth, the value of hand for hand, the value of foot for a foot. All equivalent of the pain of burning for burning and of wounding for wounding and of blow for blow. You are Matt, down here, Eli? Yeah, I'm 27 now. 20, it's 28, actually. Yeah. Okay. Okay, continue on up the top, guys. And when a man strikes the eye of his Canaanite servant or handmaid and causes blindness, he shall let him go free on account of the eye. That's interesting, right? I mean, that's, uh, that's, ha that's saying that you're going to be beating people with sticks, right? And absolutely, like, hit them in the face. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, yeah, I guess there's no mercy back to the slaves or something. I don't know. I don't know what to make of all this stuff. Exodus 21, 27. Without the tooth of his Canaanite man or maidservant, he shall make the servant free on account of the tooth. And if an ox... Okay, now we're at 28. Okay, so now we got to go down to Yah's scriptures and finish this up. Okay, Yah's scriptures, verse 28 at the bottom. And when an ox gores a man or a woman to death, then the ox shall certainly be stoned, and his flesh is not eaten, and the owner of the ox is innocent. Okay, now we had a cow that didn't quite gore somebody to death. He uh, tried gore Eli to death. Um, Eli came back, and um, he was in tatters. It looked like he'd been drugged through a knot hole, and he had, like, uh, just totally, his clothes were just ripped to shreds. The Mr. Ed, our old cow, that is no longer Mr. Ed, he did, but uh, he like went, went, grabbed you, like threw you to the ground, drug you across the ground, you came back. Uh, but that was the end of that, and Mr. Ed went away. Uh, heaven, I think, or somewhere. Maybe he went to cow hell, I'm not sure. Yeah, I went to our freezer. That's, that's free. It's a little colder in the freezer. Okay, 29. However, if the officer was previously in the habit of goring and his owner had been warned, and he has not kept a confine so that it's killed a man or a woman, the ox is stoned and his owner also is put to death. If a sin covering is laid upon him, then he shall give the ransom of his life, whatever is laid on him. Whether it has gored a son or gored a daughter, according to this right ruling, it is done to him. If the ox gores a male or female servant, he is to give to their master 30 shekels of silver, and the ox is stoned. And when a man opens a man digs a pit and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls in it, the owner of the pit is to repay he is to give silver to their owner, and the dead is his. And again, this is why I talk about having answers for everything in the Torah. There's always answers in the Torah, right? If you had an animal that fell in a pit, or you had your something happen where you are not responsible for it, there's a payment system that is there. And so our Creator has not left anything untouched. He gave us answers for every kind of incident that we have. 35. And when the ox of a man strikes the ox of his neighbor and it dies... Then he shall sell the live ox and divide the silver from it, and also divide the dead ox. Or if it was known that the ox was previously in the habit of goring, and its owner has not kept it confined, he shall certainly repay ox for ox, while the dead is his. Okay, so here we are, guys. We're going to finish this up in the Targums at the top. 28. And if an ox scores a man or woman to cause death, the ox must be stoned, but shall not be killed that his flesh may be eaten. And the owner of the ox shall be exempt from the condemnation of death, and also from the price of the servant or handmaid. But the ox won't to gore yesterday and before, and it had been attested before three times, and he had neglected to restrain him, the ox, when he kills a man or woman, shall be stoned, and his master shall also die with the death sent upon him from heaven. So there's, there's, a, a, uh, there's a good way to die, right? Is if you have a violent uh, oxen or a violent animal, and it broke out and it killed a bunch of people, um, you're going to die, right? You, you did not fence well. You did not get it. And is this this guy's fault? What happens if his fence sucks? What if happens if these, these things just like why? I mean, uh, we have cows and these things walk through uh, barbed wire like it's dental floss. And these oxen, I think, are going to be much bigger. So uh, is this what you get for bad fencing? Maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> 30 says, Yet if a fine of money be laid upon him, he may give a ransom for his life, according to what shall be imposed on him by the elders of Yashrael. Whether the ox is gored a son or a daughter of Yashrael, according to that judgment, it shall be If an ox gores a Canaanite manservant or handmaid, the master of the man or woman servant shall give 30 silver, selene of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. And if a man opens a pit in the street and does not cover it, and an ox or a donkey fall therein, the master of the pit shall deliver silver to give it to its owner, the price of the ox or the donkey, and the dead body shall be his. And when an ox wounds his neighbor's ox and he dies, they shall sell the living ox and divide the price. 
and the price of the dead one they shall also divide. But if it has been known that the ox was wont to gore in time past, and his master him, he shall certainly deliver ox for ox, but the carcass and the skin shall be his. When a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills or sells it, five oxen shall he make you good for one ox, because he has hindered him from his plowing, and four sheep for one, because he has impoverished him by his theft and not done service by it. All right, that doesn't say the same. This says a little different right here. Yeah, a little bit. Um, or if it was known that the ox, I'm reading in the Yah scripture at the bottom, the ox was previously in the habit of goring, and its owner has not kept it confined. He shall certainly pay ox for ox while the dead is his. In the Targums, it says, five oxen shall he make good for one ox. So here, yet yeah, is, that's like where you restore five times. Yeah, that's this like is stealing a lot almost. Yeah, that is a lot. That's almost a lot for stealing. So what do we make of this, guys? Where it's not, we don't have this in regular scriptures. Uh, do you have something? I'm gonna wait till you finish. Okay. Anyone have anything? Any, anyone have anything on that? Um, this is a, this is this is something that if I mean, it does not say it in Yah's scriptures, I wouldn't. I would take it as leaven, right? I would take whatever it is um, because this is a big thing right here, right? Um, where it says. When a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills or sells it, five oxen shall he make good for one ox. Um, in fact, what do we, I mean, this doesn't even say the same stuff at all. Maybe six. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the, 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 to make of this other than, hey, wait a second. This is why I don't make of it. It doesn't say that. It says it in 22.1. This is it. You guys, nobody caught that? This isn't even the same stuff. 21.37 is, is 22.1. All right, thanks a lot for paying attention, gentlemen. Good job, Jake. Uh, I was in, I'm in numbers. Okay, you saw it. Okay, yeah, so, well, we don't, have, we don't have 37. No one stopped me on 37, so we're just rewriting the Bible by this whole thing. All right, that's why it's not a big deal, because it's actually in Yah's scriptures at the bottom, and so alert on this. Um, 31, 36, this is where we actually end. All right, everybody, that does it for us. Mr. Cole, what do you have? Okay, so Casey says, when we err, are we... And we are ignorant to the law. And if we're ignorant, is it our fault if we don't know the law and we break? And are we held accountable to have the judgment of it breaking it? Yeah, well, I, you know, ignorance isn't bliss when we're standing in the fire. That's, that's the thing is you are here today because Yah has, has planned for you to be where you are at. Many, many, many of us sin in ignorance. And if we were judged in the Torah in our ignorance, none of us are ever going to make it. If we are judged... Out of ignorance, based on the Torah, I don't think, right? We all fall short on this Torah. What we can do is that we can understand, that we can learn the Torah, that we can write it on our hearts, minds, and souls. And Casey, that's one of the commands that we have, is that we are told to write this on our heart, mind, and soul, to teach it to our kids, our forefathers and mothers and grandparents. Everybody's supposed to be teaching the Torah. This is something that's not supposed to be brand new. So we're all going to end up not figuring it out later. And in scriptures, there's a sacrifice for the sins, for the sins of, of things that you recollect later. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to pray about these. You're going to have to seek uh, forgiveness because they were inside of ignorance. And we didn't know. None of us knew. But now we do. And now we can make this and we can change our lives and we can, we can make right the things of the past to the best that we can possibly do that. All okay. right, what else? Um, so I was behind on that because I was holding that. And then he said... Did Messiah preach against eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, when he preached, love your neighbor and your enemy, and turn the other cheek? Yeah, he said, he, you have he heard. Is he changing the law? Yeah. He said, you have heard before that eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, because what I say, forgive your brother. Yeah, and, and so what we have to understand is that Messiah came and walked the Torah and gave us more specifics for the Torah. Back in the day when it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, Messiah even talks more that all of these things were done because people had stubborn hearts, that their hearts were not willing to forgive, that they were not in obedience. Messiah's walk defines love to our neighbor as something that we, we got in the Torah, but we didn't know it as much as Messiah gave it. When we are told to forgive 70 times seven, right? That's not in the Torah. We know, we know that we're not to just hold grudges and to, to make enemies and to let the sun go down on our anger. But we didn't realize that when we are told to forgive 70 times 7, that, that's not new. That's just grasping more parts of what Torah always was and always is. And that when we harbor anger, when we harbor resentment against our fellow neighbor, we're harboring it against a child of the Most High. And we are told to love our neighbors and to, and to, to do all of, 
of that. And no, I don't think Messiah changed the Torah. I think he came and gave us the light to understand it in a better fashion and to, to make it better. And when we are out loving our wife and that we are unwilling to write her a letter of divorcement because our Messiah said that, you know, that it's one flesh and that's who we should love. That is where we are. Um, that is, that's where I believe that we should. Um, anything else on that mystical? Um, this is just a little bit. Lisa says, I'm having an issue with forgiveness with my own daughter. She had an abor abortion and I don't believe that in that and never have and never will. Yeah, well, that's that's the thing, Lisa. Um, I will tell you that um, Boss Clan has a, another member. Um, Boss Clan has a, how old is he? 20, 28. 28 year old boy. His name is Bo Boss. And he was from my very first marriage. And Bo Boss, um, I didn't get to raise him and I was basically kicked away from him. But in his growing up, he did the exact same thing. And um, he killed uh, my grandson or granddaughter. And he and his girlfriend out of wedlock, um, complete complete issues. And um, I have a very big issue with him. And um, 10 or so years ago, he came down with us and he didn't make the cut. And um, I could not infuse him into my people, my family who were looking for the Torah and were looking for this. And it's something that I don't, I guess I don't have an answer for. Yeah, we absolutely, like Brother Glenn probably right, you absolutely need to forgive, but there's always that hurt of uh, a life that is gone. And it's, it's one of those things when we as people value life so much and one of our own family members kills a human being, um, it's hard. And so I, I don't have answers for you. Brother Glenn's answer is probably the best. We need to forgive. And um, as much as I have forgiven my son, I, 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 I just, I don't talk to him a lot. We don't have a good relationship. And a lot of it had to do with the abortion and things of that nature. And so um, I guess I don't have answers, probably more confusion on this, but um, hopefully something inside of that, maybe Brother Glenn's forgive will work for both of us. And um, we can we can forgive, but there's always there's always a dead body out there. Okay. And for Casey, he can email you. Yeah, Casey, email. Yeah, brother, email email away. My email guys for anybody is J B O S S zero zero eight at gmail dot com, and it's also in the description as well. Right. And um, in the chat as well. Yeah, put it in the chat. And so I guess that's it, everybody. Um, we love you all. We thank you guys very very much. Um, Jade, will you please exit us? with our um, ironic blessing. Yep. Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. He will deliver his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. Okay, and guys, um, we'll ask for um, apologies now. Our dogs always break out. We have nine pit bulls that sit around our feet at all times. And uh, they always seem to know when it is time. You're going to get some uh, dogs howling here. Much love, everybody. We love you. Hit it.
All right, everybody, may Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May his light forever shine upon you. May the Torah fill your life with grace and mercy. And may you forever find Messiah Yahushua in the light of this world. And may you guys rest easy and have a great Shabbat. Much love to you all. We're out. All right. Shabbat. Shalom, everyone.